I want to introduce you to Deborah. Deborah can do really amazing things. Well, she can even predict the future. She got to a point where she predicts rights with 90% precision. And she does that by reading every newspaper ever written, every encyclopedia or book ever published, every tweet that was ever tweeted. She noticed that some events repeat themselves, and she started finding patterns. One of those patterns connects a rise in gas and bread prices with the probability of student riots. This shows she predicted the Sudan riots lately. As you might have already guessed, Deborah is not the little cute girl on the right. That's my sister, Eleanor. Deborah is the computer program I wrote and was sitting here on the left. Both Deborah and Eleanor are six years old. And when I was six, I wrote my first line of code. It helped me get to the next stage of a game. And since then, as I grew up, I was really fascinated with riddles, little pieces of information, and adventures. This is what got me started with computer science in the university less than 10 years later. And it was so much fun that I even started my PhD. And this is how my journey to predict the future started. This was the same year the Mayan calendar was about to end and people were predicting the end of the world. On New Year's Eve, when the Times Square, the ball was about to drop at 11 p.m. at night, thousands of birds in BB, Arkansas, fall down from the sky, all dead. No poison, no disease. Well, quite a coincidence, quite a mystery, considering that the Mayan calendar about to end. And I went on Google, and I was looking at how people are searching for the words bird's death over time. And I've noticed something really interesting, that people are searching for the words bird's death significantly more than usual. And actually, it's not the first time they did it. It happened before in Austin. And for me, it was amazing that we have this virtual resource, the World Wide Web, that completely reflects the events that are happening in our real world. Well, the story for BB Arkansas doesn't end here. Approximately in the same time, hundreds of thousands of fish washed down the shore, all dead. The newspapers say that it's natural causes, no relation to the bird's death. But what I've noticed is that, again, people are searching for fish death much more than usual. And again, not the first time. When I dwelled in, I noticed that the places where people search for those words are places where people search for the words oil spill. And then it hit me. Oil spills. Oil spills. They cause oxygen depletion in water which is cause number one of fish death. That's interesting. I wish I could connect all those things. So this is what we started to do. The problem with, if you work only with queries, you see only a small window to the reality. You only see what people found interesting enough to search for. You don't see this type of information like oil spills cause oxygen depletion. And this is the mystery I started solving. We decided to get more data. We got to answer this mystery. We got 150 years of New York Times articles, real time in social media, in addition to the human web behavior. A system started analyzing it, and we taught it to read it like a child would read all the text. The system started looking at different texts, like tanker and merchant ship collide. It would try to understand what did the action, the tanker, that the action was the collision and that it was performed on merchant ship in Singapore. It would then look at the text that somebody would write that this event caused another event, like this piece of text, all spill of Singapore. It read all those articles and created a big graph that represents the events that it read from 13 million articles. It represented different events, their connections, and the knowledge that we have about them. Around 300 million entities with billions of edges connecting them. The system was able, based on this graph, to predict the shortage of iPads in 2011. There was a tsunami in Japan. It hit the factories next to the shore, affecting the supply to another factory in China. Our system was working by the way that we provided with a free text, like cholera, 
and every date would give us the prediction, the probabilities of cholera to happen. So we know, based on this causality graph, that storms cause cholera. Cholera is a waterborne disease, so it's not surprising. But not after each storm you have a cholera outbreak. So we decided to look a bit deeper. We started to look at correlations, different events that tend to happen one after another. And we saw this interesting correlation that droughts that can happen even two years before a storm can cause cholera in much higher probabilities. This observation was based on a few events in Angola. But again, it was very few events. We cannot infer anything from that. But in Bangladesh, 19 significant cholera cases, out of which most of them were after droughts. What if we connect both of those pieces of information? What is in common with Angola and Bangladesh? So we started getting world knowledge from Wikipedia. Our system inferred that Angola and Bangladesh both have low GDP and low concentration of water. And that in those type of countries, if you have a drought, and two years later you have a storm, the probability of cholera is much higher. So I didn't find the answer to the mystery of the fish death and birth death, but I found something much more interesting. In April 2011, our system started alerting about cholera in Cuba. I was completely surprised. There was no cholera outbreak in Cuba for 130 years. It cannot be true. It must be a bug in the software. I just completely shut it off. Almost a year later, storms in Cuba. The system goes on again, alerting about cholera. Again, I couldn't believe that. How can that happen? No cholera outbreak in 130 years. And then, a few months later, we have the most severe cholera outbreak in Cuba in 130 years, based on this pattern we just described. And cholera is a disease that kills 100,000 people a year. And we cannot prevent droughts. We cannot prevent storms. But we can prevent people from dying. We can just send them clean water in time. Cholera mortality rate drops from 50% to less than 1% if you get them clean water in time, if we could just predict the cholera in time. Every day, decision makers in healthcare, business, politics, are making critical decisions that affect the lives of all of us. And still, many of those decisions are made in the dark. In the past, it was because we didn't have enough data or the technology to process it. But now, we have finally reached the point where we have enough data and the technology to process it to make better decisions. And this is my passion, to arm us with scientific capabilities to automatically anticipate and ultimately affect future outcomes based on lessons we learned from the past. So my journey to predict the future has just begun, and I'm working really hard to get tools like DEBRA to decision makers to make scientific predictions so we can make better decisions. And this is because I believe that it can change global economy and even save lives. Thank you.